Hello everyone. I am Dr. Shikha Garg. Hope everyone is doing well. So today we are going to discuss something about vitamin D and vitamin B12. Vitamin D is also called as sunshine vitamin. It's very very important and crucial uh, uh, vitamin which plays role not only in the bone health but also in various other things. So we will discuss in detail why do we need to uh, get vitamin D and B12 checked regularly and why do we need to take its deficiency if they are uh, present uh, very seriously because the function is not only for the bones or for the other things there's a lot many functions uh, it's starting from the brain neurological functions to the bones to rbc production for vitamin b12 uh, various other cardiovascular uh, risks are prevented if we have adequate vitamin D and B12 levels. Uh, there is a certain role in cancers also, in prevention of cancers also, and not many other things which we will discuss in detail. So it is really important we take these vitamins very seriously and we just need a simple blood test to get them checked. It's a very quick test, just takes one hour almost uh, and a very uh, treatment options are also very easy. We just need supplements. Uh, we can take them in the form of natural foods also. But if there is a acute deficiency, we do need other supplements. So we'll discuss the details about what is uh, the role of vitamin D and B12, what are the natural sources, how much dose is daily recommended uh, and what are the food sources, what are the supplements and how to get checked, all these things. Discussing vitamin D3 and B12, every cell in our body from brain to bones has vitamin D3 receptor on its surface. These vitamins regulate the function of several genes in our body, hence its deficiency can lead to range of symptoms and conditions. So what is the role of vitamin B D3? Uh, it's also called a sunshine vitamin. Its role is beyond strong bones. It's a precursor to immunity, hormones and much more. Active vitamin D functions as hormone, maintains serum, calcium and phosphorus concentration in the blood within the normal range. Also helps in the absorption of calcium and phosphorus, preventing osteoporosis, rickets and osteomalacia. It also helps in the production of white blood cells and T cells, hence the role in the immunity. It also helps in the production of hormones including thyroid hormone and sex hormones and also has a role in uh, if it is deficient can lead to secondary hyperparathyroidism. There is a certain role in prevention of cancers and also in prevention of cardiovascular disease because vitamin D indirectly regulates the RAS system which thereby help in the blood pressure maintenance and therefore indirectly affects the cardiovascular system. So there is a certain role in brain health and memory. Uh, there is a discussion on this that vitamin D is involved in various uh, brain processes as receptors are definitely present everywhere on neurons and glia. So there may be certain involvement in causing the depression if it is deficient. There is a certain role in multiple sclerosis. In patients having type 2 diabetes, or patients might develop type 2 diabetes because vitamin D plays roles in glucose metabolism and also in the insulin secretion. So it might cause insulin resistance if we are deficient in vitamin D3 and indirect effect would be diabetes. There is a very small role in weight loss as well. So what is the role of vitamin B12? It's a water soluble vitamin. It has an important role in energy production and endurance by carbohydrate metabolism. It helps in keeping gut healthy. And of course, it is also absorbed in the gut. So it has kind of a uh, circular effect. So if a uh, gut, health, gut is healthy, there would be a better absorption of B12. Indirect effect is there. Uh, RBC production is very important and dependent on vitamin B12. If there is a deficiency, it can lead to megaloblastic anemia as well as low counts of WBCs and platelets. So healthy RBC formation and DNA synthesis are all dependent on vitamin B12. Also acts as a cofactor for two enzymes, methionine synthetase and l methanyl methionate coa mutase. If there is a deficiency, it can lead to glossitis of the tongue. There could be fatigue, palpitations, weight loss, infertility, uh, brain fogginess. There might be dementia, cognitive dysfunctions because it has a role in maintaining the brain health and also the nerve health. It helps in the myelination. So if there is a deficiency, there would be mood 
uh, irregulation there could be neurological changes numbness tingling in the hand and feet there is a small role in prevention of cancers and cardiovascular disease and stroke uh, in pregnancy and breastfeeding women vitamin b12 has a very important role because it prevents neural tube effect defects it uh, developmental delays failure to thrive and anemia in the newborns so why are vitamin d3 and b12 deficiencies common the main reason is the less exposure to sunlight for vitamin d and uh, also latitude season aging use of sunscreen pigmentation of the skin these all influence the production of the vitamin d3 by the skin for vitamin b12 uh, there is a inadequate intake through food there could be malabsorption autoimmune conditions lack of intrinsic factors gastrointestinal surgeries chemotherapy excess intake of alcohol smoking use of antacids and among others there could be another important is it is uh, lesser found in the uh, vegetarian diet so vegetarians are prone to deficiency of vitamin b12 so how to find out it's a, such a simple blood test we just need 2 to 3 ml of your blood sample and uh, reporting could be done in 1 to 2 hours it's a very easy and a very simple and affordable test to get your vitamin d and b12 levels checked so what are the natural ways to prevent vitamin d3 and b12 deficiency while well, supplementation is essential if you have acute deficiencies but certain lifestyle changes can also help with the production of vitamin d specifically the adequate sun exposure and consumption of the balanced diet so what are the natural sources sources of d3 are sunlight whole eggs egg yolks mushrooms fatty fish fish liver oils liver liver directly forms vitamin d3 seafoods beans peas lentils nuts and seeds soy products we'll discuss in detail how much is uh, present in all these things for b12 animals primary meat fish milk milk products and eggs so if a patient is uh, vegetarian if a person is vegetarian there are chances of deficiency of b12 so these are the vitamin d content for the selected food so you can see in detail how much is present in particular food like cod liver oil if we take one tablespoon there is 34 microgram per serving so there are what other options are there there could be a trout salmon is a fish mushrooms milk soy ready to eat cereals which are fortified uh, eggs liver tuna fish cheese mushroom chicken breast beef broccoli carrots almonds apple banana rice whole wheat lentils uh, sunflower seeds these all ha have vitamin d3 levels uh, but there are certain vegetarian things like from broccoli carrots almonds apples these do not really have any of the um, uh, vitamin d once they are uh, cooked or raw or chopped so not really useful thing so for the vitamin b12 uh, there are a lot many food options so like beef liver nutritional yeast which is fortified salmon beef ground milk yogurt cereals cheese egg banana bread white etc so what is the recommended dietary allowance uh, that is the rds for the vitamin d if uh, depending upon the age group you need it in different for the males for females for in pregnancy and lactation it varies so in the normal adult of 19 to 50 years we need 15 microgram per day for males and similar for the females in pregnancy another 15 microgram is needed and if you are lactating then again 15 micrograms so for b12 again the age dependent for an adult uh, like 19 plus years for in males 2.4 microgram in females as well and if in cases of pregnancy and lactation it is 2.6 microgram in pregnancy and 2.8 microgram in lactation so when we test it specifically for the vitamin d so there are the serum concentrations that is the value uh, available in your blood so depending upon that we actually uh, interpret the results so if the value is less than 30 nanomole uh, it is associated with the deficiency if it is between 30 but less than 50 so it is considered inadequate for bone and overall health for more than 50 it is considered adequate and there could be adverse effects if it is more than 125 
and in uh, that is nano mold so in for nanograms so it is less than 12 is uh, deficient 12 to less than 20 is inadequate more than 20 is adequate more than 50 is adverse effects toxicity so get tested for your between b12 and d on a special discounts available in our lab and also on a very reliable testing method machines for any further queries feel free to call us on the given numbers you can ask any questions we are available on whatsapp we are available on facebook twitter on calls everywhere thank you so much